Thank you very much for the kind words and the introduction. I hope I won't disappoint you. Today, I'll, I'll be sharing my experience with, with you about integrating VNC in uh, Wayland and Weston, of course, with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Uh, I work for a consultancy company called Konsuku Group. Uh, the company was founded in 2012. I joined it in 2015. My colleagues and I have experience in various uh, uh, open source projects with a lot of upstream contributions to, to the Yocto project, to Open Embedded, Automotive Grade Linux, uh, the Linux kernel, and U-Boot. Uh, although the uh, company is headquartered in San Jose, California, uh, there are engineers all around the world, and I'm speaking right now, speaking right now and working remotely from my hometown in Povdi, Bulgaria. Uh, the agenda for this talk is uh, a brief introduction to Wayland and Weston. I'm pretty sure most of you are already familiar with them, but I try to uh, provide this presentation uh, in a form that is beginners friendly. Uh, so we'll speak a little bit about Wayland and Weston. After that, we'll focus on the VNC backend and the integration of VNC backend in Weston and uh, the different Yocto project releases. Uh, finally, I'll share the exact steps how to prepare a core image Weston with uh, VNC uh, enabled and to run it on a Raspberry Pi 5. Please fasten your seatbelts because I have 27 slides and I have the ambition to cover them in 27 minutes. So it's going to be a lot of slides and a lot of talking. So uh, let's start with Wayland and Weston. Wayland is a display protocol that um, specifies the communication between a display server and its clients. Uh, the whole project started 15 years ago in 2008. Uh, basically, the idea is to replace X11 in uh, GNU Linux distributions. Uh, there is a security by design because um, uh, uh, there is an isolation of the input and the output of every window in Wayland. There are multiple different compositors for Wayland. Uh, Weston is the reference uh, compositor. It's, a, it's simple, it's small, and it's um, very convenient for embedded devices. Because of this, uh, it's often used uh, with Pocky and other distributions built with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Uh, recently, Weston 13 was released uh, like three days ago, uh, but this talk will focus on Weston 12. And actually the versions of Weston are, are important in terms of this talk and the VNC backend. I'm gonna explain you why in the coming slides. Um, so it's a common uh, problem to ask how to uh, share desktop. Um, and uh, there are several remote desktop technologies that are implemented in uh, Weston. Uh, the first one is uh, remote desktop protocol, RDP. And the second one is the star of this talk, uh, virtual network computing, also known as VNC. Uh, remote desktop protocol, also known as RDP, is a proprietary protocol from Microsoft. Uh, it does the same job as um, VNC. Um, in other words, it shares graphical desktop for monitoring, uh, system administration, and so on. Uh, it's based on the extended ITUT application sharing protocol. Uh, here's the important difference between RDP and VNC. RDP is a semantic protocol that's aware of controls, fonts, and other graphical primitives. Furthermore, um, RDP uses RSA security, RC for Cypher. Um, in February, during FOSDEM, I had a lightning talk, and in about 15 minutes, I explained how to integrate RDP in uh, uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded, again, uh, using core image Weston. But today, I'm going to focus on VNC. Uh, this is the alternative graphic uh, uh, desktop sharing system. It's based on the remote fr uh, frame buffer protocol, uh, also known as RFB. Uh, VNC has been uh, here for, for a while, for quite some time. It's very well-known uh, technology because um, it was initially created by Olivetti Research Laboratory um, 25 years ago in 1998. Next versions of the protocol were published uh, by the company Rio VNC. Unlike RDP, VNC is pixel-based. Uh, the good thing is that VNC, because it's pixel-based, it works with all operating systems and applications, including Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and GNU Linux distributions, no matter if they're using X11, Wayland, or X Wayland. Um, 
So in order to have remote desktop sharing in Weston, the reference uh, compositor of Wayland, we need a backend. This is, of course, the VNC backend. And the work on the VNC backend started several years ago. Um, here is a screenshot of um, GitLab pull request opened by uh, Stephen Agner, uh, who is adding uh, VNC support um, based on NIT VNC library. Um, this happened in 2020, but the backend was actually merged later on. Uh, Philip Zaber um, took uh, Stevens' um, 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 GitLab uh, pull request. He made some fixes and changes, applied them on top on Western, and finally VNC backend landed a year ago in uh, Western with the release of Western 12. This is the previous major uh, uh, version release of Western. As I mentioned three days ago, Western 13 was released. Uh, so uh, VNC in Western comes with the VNC backend as explained. Western 12 is the first version that supports it. New versions will continue to support it, obviously. Uh, VNC backend for Western depends on neat VNC and NeatVNC is an open source VNC server library with a clean interface started by Andre uh, with code available at GitHub. Um, NeatVNC has build dependencies on libdrm, mason, and uh, package config, and also a runtime dependency on AML, Andre's main loop. So uh, now let's go a step um, uh, back and talk a little about a, a little bit about the Yocto project. Um, I know that pretty much all of you are familiar uh, with the Yocto project, and most of the people here are very experienced users. But as as I said at the beginning, I'm trying to provide this as a beginner friendly uh, presentation. So just a few words about the Yocto project. It's a collaborative project of the Linux Foundation. Open embedded build system um, includes Bitbake and Open Embedded Core. Uh, there is a reference distribution called Pocky, and um, the Yocto project has two releases per year, including a long-term support release covering two, at least two-year period. And the releases are important in, uh, in the case for having um, an appropriate Western version with VNC backend. And um, here is a short list of some of the recent actively maintained um, Yocto project releases. Um, the, the oldest is Dunfell. This is from April, 2020, and it's a long-term release, which is supposed to be supported until April next year. Kirkstone uh, version four of, of the Yocto project was released in May, 2022. It's supposed to be um, maintained until April, 2026. And uh, we have a version 4.3 that is currently active uh, until May 2024. And version uh, five of the Yocto project is supposed to be released in April 2024. This is going to be the next long term support release. Um, the Yocto project and the Open Embedded provide recipes for both uh, Western and Wayland. Uh, this is happening through Open Embedded Core. Uh, here you can see a screenshot of uh, the website of Open Embedded Core uh, with the current uh, available versions of Wayland and Western. However, of course, different Yocto releases uh, use different versions of Open Embedded Core, which means that we have different versions of Wayland and Western depending on the Yocto project release. Um, here is a matrix that matches the different releases with different Wayland and Western versions. As you can see, the current long-term support releases like Dunfell and Kirkstone uh, include older Wayland and Western versions. So uh, Dunfell comes with Western 12 and Kirkstone with Western 10. Both of these uh, Western versions do not implement the VNC backend, which means that as of the moment, out of the box, you cannot use a long-term support release of uh, Yocto with uh, VNC backend and uh, Western because we need Western 12. How are things are changing? And uh, for sure, the next long-term support release that is coming up will include a uh, Western version that will be compatible with the VNC backend. So now let's bid back uh, Wayland and Western with VNC support. Um, out of the box, uh, VNC is not enabled by default. So we need to create um, 
BB pen file to extend the Western uh, recipe and enable the VNC backend config. This is happening with uh, package config append. It's super simple and straightforward. You just create the BB pen file, make sure that the VNC is added to package config and that's it. You are ready to go. The second thing that you should do is to place a PAM configuration file in the package. Um, so based on the package config knob that you enable by adding VNC, uh, this will build a Western with backend VNC set to true and add need VNC from letter uh, from layer meta open embedded meta OE as a build dependency. Um, I have created um, simple um, uh, Yocto open embedded layer to demonstrate how to build um, core image uh, Western with enabled uh, and uh, Western, of course, with enabled VNC. Um, this uh, recipe is part of the Meta Western Remote Desktop project uh, in GitHub. Initially, I started this project for providing an example with RDP um, almost a year ago. But now, uh, because of this conference, I've extended this uh, this project with uh, a sublayer for uh, VNC integration. This is Meta Western VNC. So if you are, if you want to to give it a, give it a try, if you need to build Western with VNC, I hope that this example will save you some time because it's very practical and hopefully uh, will um, uh, help you better understand the things along the way and uh, build an image for. Um, uh, minimal uh, viable product concept uh, quickly. And um, uh, need VNC depends on AML, therefore we also need a recipe for it. Um, during the summer in August, I added um, these uh, recipes for uh, need VNC and AML uh, to, uh, to Meta Open Embedded Meta OE. As you can see, uh, they were accepted, merged in the master branch, uh, and even the, the community picked it up. And um, thanks uh, to the other contributors uh, improving and upgrading the Need VNC recipe. As you can see, uh, it has been recently um, upgraded uh, first to version uh, 0.7 and after that to version 0.71. It's uh, really cool to contribute upstream. Um, as part of my work in, at Consumer Group, I'm always happy when I, I have the opportunity to contribute upstream uh, because this helps not only the ongoing projects that we have, but also new projects that we're going to work uh, in future. And um, therefore, I personally uh, really enjoy the concept of uh, upstreaming everything as soon as possible. Um, because we need to build Western with VNC support, as I showed you in the previous slide, we also need to build a dependency need VNC. And here there, um, there is a trick. Uh, we need to enable TLS security in need VNC. It's not enabled by default again. Therefore, um, during uh, uh, we have to, to make sure that we have a BB append file that um, adds the TLS uh, to the package config. Uh, the second thing that we sh should be aware of is that depending on the Western version that we are building, we have to pick up uh, need VNC version that's compatible. For example, if we are building um, um, uh, Western uh, 12, we need uh, need VNC version that is um, uh, 0.7 or older, between 0 0.6 and 0, uh, 0.7. As you have seen recently, uh, need VNC recipe in uh, Meta Open Embedded Meta OE has been updated to version 0 0.7.1. Uh, this is uh, a version that's not compatible with Western 12, but it's compatible with the current Western branch in, uh, in development. Uh, therefore, for the um, example that I've created and shared in GitHub, I'm using an older version of Need VNC that I'm fetching directly from Git. Uh, this is version 0 0.6, although uh, version 0 0.7 should work as well. Uh, but in my local.com file, um, I have set uh, preferred version for Need VNC uh, from Git. Uh, the whole idea here is that right now, at this moment, I'm building Western 12, and for Western 12, I need need VNC um, that is older compared to the latest available uh, in Meta OE. Uh, one more thing that I needed to adjust is the Western uh, init BB append file. Um, so um, 
In core image Western, <clears throat> we have a user uh, Western that is uh, running the Western process. Um, and um, I wanted to create a password for the Western user. The password is Western. <laughs> I didn't need much of a security, but this is an example of how to create um, create this password as part of the creation of the Western um, the Western um, uh, user. The second thing that I did was to create um, an appropriate directory where to store TLS keys. I'm going to show you on the next slide how to generate these keys. Um, basically, the idea here is that I want to have core image Western ready with all uh, users and directories in place so that I can just copy the uh, certificates that I'm going to generate and start using um, Western with VNC. So um, this is a little bit uh, the annoying part of the presentation. We have to create uh, a key and certificate files to use with the uh, TLS uh, security uh, in VNC. VNC. I'm executing these steps on the client computer. And when I'm ready, I'm going to copy the key and the certificate file uh, on the target device. For this uh, demonstration, I'm using Raspberry Pi 5. Um, so here are the steps. Uh, the only thing that I would like to highlight is that here I'm setting the domain name. Uh, some VNC clients, like the client that I'm using, Vinagre, uh, complains uh, if there is a mismatch between the domain and the, um, the machine that I'm trying to access. Therefore, here, uh, to avoid any errors or warnings, I'm setting Raspberry Pi 5, and in uh, on my computer, uh, from the client computer from which I'm going to connect to the Raspberry Pi 5, I have um, uh, modified it, uh, it, uh, slash ATC slash hosts and set the uh, IP address in the local area network of the Raspberry Pi to, to match this domain here. Um, so in order to use VNC on Western, I'm going to copy TOS.CRT and TOS.Key to slash ATC slash VNC slash keys on the target device. In my um, example, the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, I have already configured uh, Western Any as part of the uh, layer uh, that I created, for example, um, VNC integration in um, uh, in uh, Western, but I would like to explain you the details, how it actually works. So Western Ini is the main configuration file of, um, uh, of Western, and there is a screen sharing section. In this screen sharing section, there is a command which basically starts, um, starts VNC with the backend. Uh, here, uh, it's, uh, it should be VNC. Um, not an RDP, I'll, I'll have to check and update the slides. Uh, once Western is uh, working, uh, there are two ways how to start it, to start the, the VNC. One of the ways is with a key combination control out plus uh, the S key. The other option is to, um, uh, to do it automatically. Uh, you can do this by using the screen share module for Western and uh, again, uh, editing the uh, screen share uh, section in Western Ini by adding start on startup true. This means that as soon as you start Western, the uh, VNC will be enabled by default. This is really convenient, especially for um, embedded devices where you don't have a keyboard and you don't expect the user to press a key combination in order to start VNC. So uh, this is the trick to start VNC automatically with Western. Uh, also make sure that the keys are in place um, and uh, uh, when you're starting um, Western. So once you have all these pieces of the puzzle uh, together, you're ready to connect remotely from a computer within the same network um, to, to the target device, in my case, Raspberry Pi. I'm using uh, the Vinagre uh, open source remote desktop viewer uh, for Linux and the GNOME desktop. I'm an Ubuntu um, user. So I'm starting Vinagre. This argument uh, is really convenient for troubleshooting because if there is an error like mismatch because of the domains or something wrong with the certificates, uh, with this argument, uh, the log files produced by Vinagre will contain useful information to debug the problem. On the left side, there is a screenshot of um, the Vinagre interface for um, initiating a remote desktop connection. The protocol is VNC. And I have to set the host. After that, I click the connect button on the right uh, desktop. 
Um, now on the right screenshot, you see how Vinagre is asking for a username and password. If you remember the Weston init bbpn file that I showed you, uh, the username is Weston. This is the user that starts the Weston service on the Raspberry Pi 5. And the password that I set is the same Weston. So I have to type in both username and password and to connect. Once this is done, I have successfully established the connection. Here is a screenshot. And actually you see here two Linux distributions. Um, you see my Ubuntu 2022.4 uh, long-term support with X11 and GNOME 42.9. Inside of it, I have the Vinagre uh, VNC client um, and um, it is showing core image Western uh, booted on a Raspberry Pi 5 with Western version 12 with VNC enabled, obviously. Um, as part of my work at Consumer Group, I was uh, recently involved in the porting efforts of Raspberry Pi 5 to the Yocto open embedded uh, BSP layer, layer Meta Raspberry Pi. Uh, uh, there is a GitHub pull request that is still open to add support for Meta Raspberry Pi, but um, all the important bits, at least for initial porting of uh, Raspberry Pi 5 to this BSP layer are there. And I expect that uh, this GitHub pull request will be uh, soon merged. Um, so um, I'm using a master branch of Meta Raspberry Pi with, in addition with this uh, GitHub pull request, just because I thought it's gonna be cool to, uh, to provide this demonstration using Raspberry Pi 5, uh, because it's a, it's a new single board computer that was expected for quite some time. I'm sure that some of you would ask uh, about the performance and the VNC frames per second on Raspberry Pi. It goes about 19 frames uh, per second, eventually up to 20, but in this ballpark, 18, 19, 20 frames per second on Raspberry Pi 5. Um, here is a simple test that I'm running and the screenshot that you can see. So a, a little bit of a testing and quality assurance. Um, as you probably uh, understand, the, the VNC backend uh, implementation um, in Western does not depend directly on the hardware. As long as you can run appropriate Western version on the target device, you, you can take advantage of the VNC backend. I have personally tested it on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, nowadays, I, I had the opportunity to test it on Raspberry Pi 5 as part of the preparation for this presentation. In the past, I also used Rock Pi 4 uh, with uh, Meta Rock Chip BSP layer, and I did the same demonstration. Also, I have run the same using a Tordex Virgin IMX 8M Plus system on a module. And here, uh, there is an important note about um, users of NXP uh, hardware, uh, uh, devices with NXP IMX 6, uh, 7, or 8 should use Ethnaviv open source driver when building their uh, Yocto distribution, because uh, the Ethnaviv open source driver works with um, the new uh, Western versions like Western 12 that I'm using here for this, this demonstration. Um, those of you who have experience with NXP know that um, there is a fork of Western called Western IMX. Uh, the idea of this fork is to provide uh, integration of Vivante proprietary GPU drivers and to enable hardware acceleration using them. However, Western IMX hasn't been ported to uh, version 12 yet. The latest available version as of the moment of Western IMX is 11, which means that there is no VNC backend. Therefore, my recommendation is if you are using NXP and want to use a Western with um, uh, enabled VNC is to give the at the Viv open source driver a try. Um, this is uh, the end of the presentation, so it's time for uh, a little bit of conclusions. Uh, VNC is a uh, pixel-based graphical desktop sharing system. It's well known, widely used. Um, VNC backend was added in Western version 12. Uh, newer versions of Western, like Western 13 that was recently released, also support it. Uh, the implementation of the VNC backend in Western depends on need VNC and AML. You have to generate appropriate keys and certificate files to use a TOS encryption while um, using a remote connection over VNC. And uh, the latest versions of um, the Yocto project and open embedded, um, specifically of um, 
meta open embedded provide all the necessary dependencies um, to build core image western with enabled vnc i have created this um 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 yocto open embedded layer meta western remote uh, desktop which uh, provides integration of um, uh, both vnc and rdp so that it can help you to bootstrap your distribution and get a quick start with either vnc or actually with rdp as well thank you very much for um uh, having me here at this summit um here are some uh, useful links